We welcome you here at Dow High School for this baseball matchup between the Dow Chargers and the Midland Chemics. We are moments away from first pitch on this beautiful Monday afternoon. We have the starting pitcher for Dow throwing his final warm-up pitches as Midland will get their first attempt to hit the ball. Let's run you through this Midland lineup real quickly. It's gonna be Alex Money, the pitcher, not something you see every day. He's gonna be leading off for the Chemex. Batting second on deck will be Lane Kloha with Colin Terrell in the hole. The DH, Jarrett Wagner, followed by Laverty, Vocal, Joshua Doyle, Gabe Sokol, and AJ Harvey round out that lineup as the starting pitcher, Trent Johnson for the Dow Chargers gets ready. And here is the Dow starting lineup with Riley Nelson leading off, Alex Liekos batting second, then a pair of infielders as Jack Backus and Logan McCoy bat third and fourth. Dan Kowalczak followed by Patty Van Summeren and Johnson will round it off. So Alex Money steps into the batter's box and we are underway from Dow High School. That first pitch in for a strike, 3.56 p.m., a beautiful 79 degrees first pitch as M Money takes a first pitch strike. Money lays down a perfect bunt as Backus will run up and just eat it as Alex Money gets a bunt single to start this game off. We'll run you through the defensive alignment for the Dow Chargers in the outfield. Kowalczak's in left, Riley Nelson in center, Alex Liekos in right, the infield. Jack Backus, who fielded that bunt, didn't throw it over to first at third. Logan McCoy at short, Ryan Erdman at second, Billy Van Summeren at first, and Cam Patty behind the plate. Trent Johnson on the mound for the Chargers. As now coming up to bat, Lane Kloha, a 342 hitter this season throughout 23 games in 79 at bats. He has 27 hits, 21 of them being single. So he is a, a single hitter, someone that's going to move these runners around as their strong hitters, Terrell and Wagner, await on deck and in the hole as Trent Johnson's gonna attempt to pick off money at first base, unsuccessful. He'll do it again and the ball gets past Van Summeren at first base, but money is just gonna stay there right at first. An opportunity to move into scoring position here in the top of the first inning for Midland. They got that bunt single from Alex Money, trying to capitalize on the early success. Here comes the pitch, Money's off a swing and a miss. Here's the throw from Patty, and it will not get in there in time. Alex Money with a stolen base. Now moving into scoring position, has a prime opportunity to crack this scoreboard. A hit and run situation for Midland as Kloha swung and missed, but Money with the speed was able to beat the throw from Cam Patty behind the plate. As Patty just talking to his pitcher, this is a long game between these two schools. You can afford to give up a run early and still be good to go. You don't wanna, you wanna make sure the damage isn't too much, something you cannot come back from. Johnson looks at that runner at second, delivers home. This one hit to right field. The Echo's running and it will go right into that bullpen area as that will be counted a long strike. Johnson receiving the call from Cam Patty, who's behind the plate. Still looking at that runner at second, comes home with it. This one hit also in foul territory. Van Summeren will try to get it, but it will be outside of the field at Dow High School. And it, once again, a long strike. Now having two strikes is Kloha. Johnson looking for that strikeout pitch. Still no one out. Alex Money standing on second base. You've seen the speed, was able to swipe second base now with no one out in scoring position. Go 
Another pickoff attempt, this time at second. Logan McCoy sneaking behind Money at second base, just keeping him there a single with Money's speed. You have to assume that they're either, they're going to send the run, have to assume very good chance he scores. We've seen the speed as he stole second base earlier in this at bat. Johnson working from the stretch, delivers home. This one gets him a swing and a miss. The ump gonna say foul tipped into Patty's mitt. Nonetheless, it is a strikeout. So after giving up that leadoff single, Johnson is able to strike out Kloha. A dangerous batter coming up. Colin Terrell, a 391 hitter, has 20 singles, five doubles, 22 RBIs trying to get his 23rd ribby of this season as they're gonna pick off attempt as that is Ryan Erdman, the second baseman. A Little bit of trying to trick Mo Money at first. They had Logan McCoy standing right behind Money. McCoy running back to his position at short. Erdman coming over trying to catch Money sleeping but Money is able to go back as the first pitch to Terrell. This one in for a strike. After giving up that bunt single, Johnson settling down, struck out Kloha, gets a first pick strike on Terrell for an 0-1 count. Here's the pitch, this one low, called for a ball and a good take by Terrell, is able to work that count back to one and one. Alex Money has 27 runs, the team leader for Midland. Big reason why he's that leadoff hitter. He's also a pitcher, so an opportunity to get some run support for himself as Terrell will just hit this one out of play. And it will roll towards the soccer field to our right. Trent Johnson, a 2.13 ERA this season, has pitched in 40, 42 and two thirds innings coming in today as this pitch hit right back up the middle and Riley Nelson will come in and make the catch for out number two, actually loses his hat on the way but is still able to make the out. So after giving up that bunt single and having money steal they had a runner on second with no one out. Johnson followed that up with a strikeout and a fly out to center and is one out away from getting out of the inning, but he is going to have a tough task as the designated hitter, Jarrett Wagner, a 373 batting average. A lot of these hitters in this early part of the lineup in that upper 300 batting average. And he will come home for the first pitch and a big swing from Wagner and this will roll right back towards the backstop. A deep backstop here at Dow's High School Field. Anything that gets past Patty, you would have to assume Money would be able to advance to third. Once we get later in this game, be able to advance home. So the catchers today are gonna have a tough task. Cam Patty, the catcher for Dow. Here's the pitch home. This one off speed pitch actually goes in the dirt, gets Wagner to swing. So after going fastball, is able to go off speed, gets Wagner to chase out of the strike zone. And now Johnson is in a very good position. Johnson, the senior, delivering so far in the top of the first inning. No one score, no score yet. It looked like Midland was gonna have a chance. They had that runner on second with no one out. But Johnson able to calmly strike out Kloha as here's the strikeout pitch and this one outside. Good job by Wagner to lay off. Wagner, only nine strikeouts on the year through 59 at bats, 73 plate appearances, just nine strikeouts, that's why he's the cleanup hitter for this Kemic baseball team. 
the delivery. This one slapped to the third base and it will roll foul just past the outstretched glove of Jack Backus over there at third base. And the Chargers and Trent Johnson get lucky as that one rolled right down that foul line. Looked like it was gonna be either fair or foul. Luckily for Dow, it rolls foul. Wagner doing everything he can to stay alive. Swung and missed the first two pitches, but since then has battled off a couple, took a ball, and now in an opportunity to bring in his teammate, Alex Money, who is standing on second base. Johnson looking at that runner at second base before delivering home. This one, a swing out of the zone, but is able to make contact and will leave play. So a good job by Jarrett Wagner. Not necessarily a, a pitch that you're swinging to, to make contact into the field of play to get that run, just swinging to make contact to stay alive for the next pitch. Jarrett Wagner's done that several times, had two foul balls leave the field, had one that was oh so close to being a single down that left field line, took a pitch, is sitting at that one-two count, and will await the pitch from Johnson. And he comes back with fastball right down the middle. Wagner swings and misses. So after that leadoff single, Trent Johnson is able to strike out Lane Kloha, get Colin Terrell to fly out to center field, and then Jarrett Wagner with the strikeout swinging. So no runs on one hit, one man left on for Midland as we're gonna head towards the bottom of the first. So we'll get the first opportunity for Dow to hit for this team. Riley Nelson is gonna be the first charger trying to lead things off. Riley Nelson has had a good season, 44 at bats, has 17 hits, 16 of those 17 being singles. He has walked five times on the season. That average sitting at 386, so he's not a power guy. He's a guy that's gonna get you on base and let some of their other power hitters that come up after him get opportunities to bring him in as the starting pitcher is Alex Money. We know he has the speed on the base path as he stole second base back in the top of the first inning, and we will see if he is able to successfully pitch as well. Riley Nelson takes a few practice swings, stepping into the batter's box as the Dow Chargers will get their first opportunity to hit in the bottom of the first inning. The first pitch down the middle, Nelson taking for a strike. Money leads the team with 34 innings pitched. He's Started in five games, he's four and one, also has two saves on the year, so many different roles for Alex Money. He's given up 21 hits, nine earned runs, has 27 strikeouts, that ERA under two, so Money, a leadoff hitter, and the ace for this team is, he goes off speed and it will go inside, so Nelson doing a good job of battling to start this game. This pitch, this one on the outside called for a strike. Riley Nelson hasn't swung yet. The leadoff hitter for this Dow Charger team. Here's this pitch, this one, he fouls it. And this will leave the play over by some fans down the right field line. Decent crowd here at Dow High School, is, these two schools know each other very well. The next pitch, this one off-speed hit towards the second baseman, Laverty will get it over, and he'll throw it over to first base. That so-called is able to snag it for the first out of the inning. 
So Nelson does a good job of battling, but ultimately grounds out to the second baseman. Laverty, who is at second, Soko at first, the rest of the infield, Joshua Doyle at short, Colin Terrell at third base. The first pitch to Liekos, outside for a ball. We look at the outfield. Vocal is in left. Cole McMillan just fielding today in center field, and A.J. Harvey in right. The next pitch to Liekos, a little bit inside that one, in for a strike. Lane Kloha has the catching duties for this Kemic team. Money working outside, first couple of pitches outside for Liekos. Two have been balls, one has been a strike. The next pitch, this one also on the outside, is fouled and will actually make its way onto the soccer field here at Dow High School. Liekos now working with two strikes. Money from the windup. This one off speed hit and it, a beautiful jumping catch from Gabe Sokol for the second out of the inning. It appeared like it was gonna be able to clear Sokol and go into the outfield, but a line out to first base as Liekos making some good contact, just going a little bit over the outstretched glove of Sokol, is able to corral that as now stepping up Jack Backus, the left-handed hitter. This one off speed as Backus fouls it over to the right side. The first two batters, right-handed hitters. We're actually going to take a look at this beautiful catch from Gabe Sokol. As Money with two outs, trying to get out of this inning for a one, two, three inning. As a beautiful catch, this one off speed, and this one will get through Sokol, so a two out base hitting opportunity for Backus, and he's able to get on first base as a two out single. All three batters have hit to the right side of the field, the first one being a ground out, second one being a line out, that catch we saw from Gabe Sokol, the third one splitting through the infield of Laverty and Sokol, and now a two out base runner. As there's another pickoff attempt, this one being able to dive back in is Bacchus, as Logan McCoy will step up. The first time Alex Money has had to work from the stretch this afternoon. This one right down the middle called for a strike. Money typically likes working to the outside of that strike zone. Worked the first two hitters who were right-handed, the left-handed hitter took that inside pitch and was able to get on base. Now Logan McCoy, another right-handed hitter. Once again, working towards the outside. This one a ball. Money wants you to swing at that outside pitch, get a easy contact over to the right side of the field. The off-speed pitch also on the outside in for a strike. McCoy for this Charger team is arguably their best hitter has 60 in 61 at bats has 28 hits 17 of them being singles but that average a 459 batting average definitely knows how to get on base as he'll call time and take a few practice swings looking at third base coach and we'll step into the batter's box working with two strikes money trying to get out of this inning this one low actually will go into the dirt, so McCoy battling back. Has that runner on first base and Jack Backus, who singled just not that long ago. This one high and he swings anyway, goes to A.J. Harvey in right field, and Harvey will make the catch to end the inning. So four batters come up for Dow, four hits to the right side of the field, had a ground out, a line out, and then a single, but ultimately ended with a fly out to right field as both teams get a hit 
in the first inning, but nothing to show for it as we'll head to the, the bottom, or the top of the second, excuse me, as we will see the Midland Chemics now with their middle to bottom part of the lineup will get a chance to swing. That will start Braden Laverty, followed by Tim Bokel and Joshua Doyle. Those the three Chemics do up. As Laver as before this top of the second inning, you can watch replays of this Midland Chemics versus Dow Chargers boys baseball game on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Spectrum channels 188 through 191 in Midland and through channel 99 on AT&T's Uverse. This game will be available to stream on MCTV Network's Community Voices YouTube channel on Roku and Apple TV in beautiful high definition. Check out MCTV's website at cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV to watch this program on demand. Follow us on Facebook to learn more about community media in Midland as Laverty gonna step into the batter's box. This season for Laverty has played in 20 games, has 55 at bats, 14 hits, 10 of those 14 being singles, actually has two triples, which is second on the team, has a 255 average. So that batting average right in the middle is the first pitch, this one outside for a ball. We saw Laverty make a grounding out play in that bottom of the first inning. Now coming to bat. The 1-0 pitch, this one smacked to third base. Can't get, Backus can't get it and into the outfield it goes as Laverty starts the top of the second with a hard hitting single. And now an opportunity for some runs as a left-handed hitter is gonna come up. Tim Vogel is going to await Looking at third base coach. We saw in the first inning a hit and run situation where Alex Money was on first. Lynn Kloha was batting a an unsuccessful hit and run situation as Kloha was unable to make contact, but Alex Money did end up on second base. As we'll see if there is another hit and run situation. Actually gonna be a bunt. Backus will go to first base. So Vogel does exactly what he needs to do, a sacrifice bunt, able to bunt the runner over to second, so back-to-back -back innings with that runner on second and one out. Joshua Doyle stepping up to bat. Doyle, a 232 average, but has scored 15 runs, has 13 hits, 12 of them being singles, a big opportunity for Doyle here. He is the starting shortstop, typically one of your better, if not your best infielder. Has that arm to make it over to those throws at first base. Sort of the leader of that defensive alignment as the first pitch gets him to swing and miss for strike one. Johnson, no stranger to runners in scoring position, Alex Money. Ended the inning on second base, but got there with nobody out. Johnson was able to come back from that. Is looking back at that runner, here's the next pitch. This one hit to Backus at third, and they actually, Backus does a good job of keeping the runner at second. Will make the out over at first as the throw a little bit left of the bag. Great job by first baseman Billy Van Summeren to make the catch, apply the tag on the runner, but even better. Backus picked up the ball and looked back at second base where the runner, Vocal, or Laverty, excuse me, was standing, and that runner back at second base. So now two outs, Gabe Sokol coming up to bat. The first baseman made that terrific catch back in the bottom of the first. Now his first opportunity to hit for Midland. Johnson stepping off. Laverty who had a single to start the second inning, standing on second base. Johnson looking multiple times, will come home. This one hit to the shortstop. Logan McCoy will come up that makes the throw. And a beautiful stretch from Van Summeren is able to get out of the inning. So after giving up that leadoff single, Trent Johnson in this Charger team is going to be able to get out of this inning. 0-0 your score, heading to the bottom of the second.
Logan McCoy made an excellent play, and here's the replay. A good swing, but Logan McCoy able to come up, field it, and make a beautiful throw. Billy Van Summer and Abel with the nice extension to get out of the inning. A huge defensive play in the top of the second inning as we'll now head to the bottom of the second inning, and we'll see Alex Money's second opportunity. Dan Kowalziak leading off for this Charger team. The left fielder has 20 hits, 15 of those being singles, had four triples as well. Kowalziak's batting average at 400, so definitely does a very good job getting on base, moving those runners around. The number five hitter for this Charger team. Money ending his warm-up pitches, 0-0 zero, zero scores. Both teams have had runners on base. Midland, both innings, has gotten a runner to second base, but unable to do anything with that. Dow in the first inning had a two-out single from Bacchus, but McCoy just flew out to right field as the first pitch of the second inning. Money working on that outside once again. First pitch outside for a ball. Money working from the windup. This pitch down the middle in for a strike. Haven't seen Money throw any inside pitches yet to right-handed hitters working down the middle and towards the outside. Zump will call time. Dow in their yellow uniforms with the white pants. Kowalczak wearing number 18 in big white numbers awaits the pitch. This one hit to the right side of the field, but it will land foul. AJ Harvey giving chase, but is unable to corral that. This one also on the outside, called for a ball. Lane Cola, left, leaving that glove there just a little longer, trying to frame it into that strike zone. Unable to do so successfully. As the next pitch, this one off speed, fouled, and this will leave the playing area. As another two strike opportunity. All four hitters in that first inning hit, made contact with the ball on the right side of the field. Nelson grounded out to second. Liekos lined out to first, and Bacchus had that single, which got through the right side of the infield before the inning ending fly out. But this one, a strikeout swinging the ball high and inside, and Money gets his first strikeout of the afternoon. First strikeout of the game for Dan Kolzak. Now coming up, Caleb Brensky, the designated hitter. A senior, we may see him on the mound later today as a pitcher, also the designated hitter for this Charger team. This one in for a strike. The next pitch from Money, this one on the outside, low and outside, taking for a ball. Billy Van Summeren on deck, and then the pitcher Trent Johnson in the hole for this Charger team. This one on the inside hit to the third baseman. Tara will field it and throw it over to first base for the second out of the inning. So after a start inning strikeout, Money is able to get Brensky to ground out to third base. The first time that contact has been made to the left side of the field is now stepping in Billy Van Summeren. Van Summeren through 44 at bats, has 14 hits so far for this Charger team. Has an average over 300 as the first pitch. This one fouled onto the soccer field once again. We've had multiple balls that have made their way onto the soccer field deep outside of, on the first base side of play. The next pitch, this one fouled to the left side as it will roll into that Charger dugout before a third base coach will pick it up. So Money, a strike away from getting out of this inning. Struck out, Kowalczak. 
forced Brensky to ground it out to third base. And now Summerin at bat. The next pitch, this one, low called for a ball. So a good job by Van Summerin taking there. Van Summerin, a junior for this Charger team, awaits the next pitch. This one, he check swung as it was an off speed into the dirt. And the appeal down to first base. The first base umpire saying he didn't go around, so an ability to work this count. Is able to get now two balls. An opportunity to get on first base. Van Summer not known for his walks, only five on the year, but this one fouled, almost got out of the inning. Lane Kloha unable to corral that one. As Van Summerin, an opportunity has battled, fouled multiple pitches. Most of this Charger lineup has done a good job of making contact, just not a lot of it going into the field of play. The next pitch from Money, this one on the outside, and that's one of the things along at bat pitchers get frustrated. They throw their pitches that they like, and the batters just keep fouling it away. So sometimes you're going to see those things happen. The next pitch out past the stretch of Sokol and Van Summeren able to battle with money and is able to get on base. The second straight inning with a two out single. And now we'll see if Trent Johnson can get a little insurance runs for himself on the mound as he, he'll have his first at bat as we'll take a look at this hit from Van Summeren. Once again, this one, a beautiful hit is able to make that run over to first base. Sokol almost had it. He had one terrific catch in the first inning, unable to do so in this second inning. As Johnson awaits this first pitch down the middle in for a strike. And Summerin standing on first base. We'll see if anything comes of it. Backus had a two out single in the first and was stranded on first base and a pickoff attempt. They've gotten a few close pickoff attempts. Alex Money. A quick throw back to first base. Right-handed pitcher working out of the stretch. He'll do it again. And this one will not work. Gabe Sokol has gotten the tag on him, but the first base, Summerin, is able to beat the tag. Money will deliver home off-speed pitch. This one called for a ball. Both teams using pickoff attempts, trying to keep the runners at bay. No successful pickoff attempts, but both teams successful in keeping those runners as Summerin takes his lead. And this one out past the outstretched glove of Terrell. And this one will roll into left field. Van Summerin will move over to second as Trent Johnson has a two out single and a little bit of a two out rally potentially brewing for this Chargers. So we're going to look at this hit once again. A beautiful swing, beautiful contact is able to get into the outfield as we are a beautiful hit from this Trent Johnson Dow Charger team. As we're actually going to have a, a pinch runner for Dow is Ryan Murphy, the junior, will replace Johnson over at first base. A pinch running opportunity with the speed that Murphy possesses as the first pitch. This one in for a strike with the speed that Murphy has. Any ball that potentially in the gap, any ball down the line, you could see a run scoring. Also another scenario, a slow ground ball to second or short. Maybe they, maybe they could think about throwing over to that second base, but maybe Murphy could beat out an infield single as luckily for this Charger team, the lineup card flips over as Riley Nelson stands on deck. So if Erdman is able to get on base, you could potentially see some damage for this Charger team. Erdman has 14 hits on this season through 47 at bats. The second baseman trying to do something with two outs, and he's going to get caught looking a beautiful inside pitch from Alex Money. So after back-to-back -back singles, Ryan Erdman goes down on strikes, and this game will remain scoreless through two innings. Throughout two innings, no score so far as the Midland Chemics will now bat 9-1-2 in their lineup order, starting with A.J. Harvey. 
the right fielder before flipping the lineup card over to Alex Money. Lane Kloha in the hole for this Midland team. We'll take you through A.J. Harvey's stats while Trent Johnson warms up for this third inning. A.J. Harvey, through 14 games played, has 37 plate appearances, 30 at bats. He has 10 hits, seven of those being singles, two being doubles, and one being a triple. Four RBIs, eight runs scored, and has five walks that average 333. Every three times, it's typically what you see in a game. He is getting a hit in one of those three games. Definitely a good nine hitter. A lot of these teams at every level from high school to collegiate to professional. They put a guy that can get on base at that nine spot, giving an opportunity for their top hitters to have runners on base so you can bring him in. We saw Alex Money get a beautiful bunt single. We know he can make contact. We know he's one of their strongest hitters. Typically doesn't work with a lot of runners on base. Now could have an opportunity to do so as A.J. Harvey, the left-handed hitter, steps into the batter's box. The first pitch, this one low into the dirt. Campetti having trouble with it for a first pitch ball. The defensive alignment, a little bit of a shift for Jack Backus standing in the grass, awaiting a potential bunt. And this one low for a ball. Harvey hasn't lifted the bat off of his shoulder so far. First baseman Billy Van Summeren at that area where the grass and the dirt meet. Second and short, Erdman and McCoy playing normal depth. This pitch hit high into the air. This one will go out of play over behind us at left on the left side of the field. So the first one going on the left side of the field with a left-handed hitter at bat. Johnson working from the wind dump top of the third no score so far. So here comes the first, the next pitch. This one inside almost hits him. Harvey did not move in for a ball. Johnson through two innings of work has given up two hits. Also has two strikeouts. Both innings, a runner has reached second base, but no one able to come around to score. One of those two hits was a bunt single as well. Only one ball leaving the infield safely as this pitch inside and Harvey will get on via base on balls, which if you're Midland, something you have to be very happy about is Alex Money walking up. You could see a bunt. Whatever the result is, it is a success for Midland. If you sacrifice the bunt, move Harvey over to second, you have your third straight inning with a runner on second with less than two outs. Even the worst case scenario for Dow, Money could he did it in the first inning, lay down a bunt and successfully get to first base. Then you would have runners on first and second with nobody out. So a lot of scenarios for Midland to play with and a beautiful snag by Cam Paddy behind the plate. And that pitch low in the dirt, which follows a walk, is going to cause the coach to head out and talk with their starting pitcher, Trent Johnson. The head coach for this Dow team is Rich Juday. And he will go out and talk to his starting pitcher as we'll take this time to read you through Alex Money's stats. That average came into today at 333, obviously improving because of the first inning single. Has 67 plate appear at bats, 23 hits, 17 of them being singles, has three doubles, also leads this Kemic team with triples in three. So a combination of really good contact and really good speed for this team and now money in a prime position to do some damage early in this game no score so far as Johnson will come home with it this one slapped down the left field side will actually leave play and got a little too excited Alex money if he's able to swing a little bit later he may have been able to get that ball to drop and that would be damage with the speed from Money. Harvey on first base. You'd have to assume that that'd be a double, maybe even more as another pickoff attempt from Johnson. This pickoff attempt going right into the dirt. There's two, typically there's two types of 
pickoff attempts. The one you just throw it over nonchalantly to keep the runner at bay. And the second one, which you just saw, is you are actively trying to get the runner out. Johnson, the delivery home. This one hit to left center field. Nelson will run over, and Nelson will make a beautiful catch. The runner's gonna have to run all the way back to first base. The throw from McCoy is going to be not in time. A great defensive play from the outfield. Ryan Nelson in center, calling off Dan Kowalczak in left for a big out number one. And the base runner, A.J. Harvey, he assumed it was gonna go down. He was rounding second base, heading towards third base when Nelson caught the ball. Luckily, he was able to keep his heads up and able to run back. The cutoff throw from Logan McCoy, just not enough time as Van Summeren unable to step on the bag before he got there. Now batting Lane Kloha. There goes Harvey. And this ball in the dirt, Kloha standing at bat and A.J. Harvey will get a stolen base. So for the third time, this game, one in the first, one in the second, and now one in the third. Midland has a runner on second with less than two outs. In the second inning, they had Br Bray Braylon Laverty, excuse me, on second base when Joshua Doyle grounded out to third and Gabe Sokol grounded out to short. This inning, A.J. Harvey standing on second, Lane Kloha up to bat. The pitch, this one hit high in the air. Nelson will have an opportunity again as Erdman running back. And it's actually not gonna go as far as I thought as Ryan Erdman will make a beautiful catch at his second base spot. Doing a good job, very difficult running backwards. Is able to make the catch in the grass. Good communication, typically easier to run in than run out. Alex Liekos was running in, but Erdman calling everyone off was able to make the catch. And now Colin Terrell, the third baseman, will get an opportunity, a single, likely to bring around Harvey standing on second base. Johnson delivers slider. This one called for a strike. Erdman keeping the runner at bay at second base. Has a very large gap with Van Summeren on first. Erdman at second. There is a large gap for a, a single to right field would potentially score a run. The next pitch, this one hit to left, hit to the third base, and a beautiful catch from Bacchus. So they get the runner on second base, unable to do anything with it, and through two and a third innings, or two and a half innings, excuse me, we have no score, as Dow is gonna get a chance to have their one, two, and three hitters hit in the bottom of the third inning. Alex Money gonna walk to the mound for his third inning of work. No score so far. Riley Nelson will lead off for Dow, followed by Alex Liekos with Jack Backus standing in the hole. Backus has one of the Chargers' three hits. Did that with two outs in the first inning. Both teams have gotten some good base runners, unable to do anything with it. We talked about Backus batting in the hole. Good job hitting, he also did a very good job fielding as you're gonna take a look at this nice snag he made at third base, a beautiful hit, but just an even better defensive play for the third out of the inning. And it's even more important with Harvey standing on second base. If he is unable to corral, corral that ball at third, if it goes under his glove, if any of those possibilities happen, we have a completely different ball game as the runner more than likely would be at home plate, but was able to make the catch, and we have a no-score ball game in the bottom of the third. First pitch to Riley Nelson. This one goes back to the backstop. Alex Money has gone two innings of work, had a couple of challenges at this one, also outside in the dirt. Lane Kloha, the catcher, 
trying to keep things from going to the backstop. There is no runners on, so a ball that gets past Kloha, not necessarily anything too dangerous besides the fact that it is a ball. Riley Nelson, an opportunity to get on base. He grounded out to second to start the, the first inning. This push high. Things getting worse for Alex Money. That count up to 3-0 and oh now. Nelson hasn't even had to swing and is one pitch away from getting on first base. As Nelson taking all the way, this one called for a strike. Nelson, right-handed hitter, takes that left foot and already steps it towards third base. As this one, he swings and a miss, and that's one where that batting stance, you know, a lot of times you see you're taught to step to the pitcher. Nelson stepping towards the third base side, so if a pitch is inside and he makes contact, wow, it's gonna go far. He's already stepping into that swing, but Money, a pitcher that likes to swing to the outside, and we've seen a couple times Riley Nelson having some trouble. He had a easy grounder to second base to start the first inning for Dow, and now the count has worked back to full. This one hit to right field. A.J. Harvey is gonna let it drop, and the ump is going to signal. He's gonna put out his right hand, and signal that that was a foul ball, a, a break for Alex Money and this Kemic team. Unfortunately, Nelson will have to run back as he was already rounding first when the call was foul. And he will go back to first base. Or home plate, excuse me, the payoff pitch. This one right back up the middle, the shortstop, fielding, throwing. Not going to be in time as the speed of Riley Nelson is able to beat that out for an infield single. Joshua Doyle came up, made the throw, gave Sokol the stretch, the extension, but was unable to make it. That was a bang, bang play. First base umpire calling the runner safe. So a leadoff single to start the third inning. As we're going to look at this Infield single, you have Doyle, the throw, a bang, bang play, calling the runner safe as they will pick off attempt once again, Alex Liekos. Last time he was up, he almost had a single, but a beautiful play from Sokol kept that at bay. As he's gonna square down a bunt, and this one will go foul. One of the most interesting things to always watch is with the runner on first base, how many times do they think about throwing it over to second? We see the speed of Riley Nelson. Do you give up that runner moving into scoring position? Do you try to, it's a big risk, big reward if you're able to get out that runner at second, but if you're not, then you have runners on first and second with no one outs with Jack Backus standing on deck. So it's a very game within the game situation as Terrell in the grass for Midland is Money will step off. Liekos likely will square around to bunt again. So we're going to get another pickoff attempt. A big swipe from Sokol missing Nelson, who dives headfirst back into first base. Money has done better since working in the stretch. As he comes home, lays down the bunt. Money will throw it over to first. So the sacrifice does exactly, it's one of those things in baseball where both teams are happy with the outcome. Dow happy, they move a runner over to for, or second base runner in scoring position. Midland happy because they did get now, but you see the Charger team coming out of the dugout, giving props to Alex Liekos, selflessly giving up a chance to hit the ball to lay down a, a beautiful bunt right back up the middle. Not too far where Money had any chance to throw it to second, but was a play that was able to get out easily. As this pitch to back, as he slaps that into left field, Vocal will run, Vocal will make the catch, and a one pitch out on the three hitter for Dow. You have to be happy if you're Midland, as Backus, Dow's dangerous hitter, most dangerous hitter at that three spot. As Logan McCoy, will come up for an opportunity to bring in a run. Alex Money, an opportunity to get out of this inning. Money looking at that runner at first. This one inside almost hits him. This one into the dirt. Money, a 
good combination between fastball outside and then throwing that inside off-speed pitch. McCoy smartly doesn't swing. The delivery, this one high and inside. This one also a ball, Logan McCoy, the number four hitter. McCoy, 28 hits, nine of those being doubles. McCoy with a 459 batting average coming into today. Their best hitter at getting on base. This one, he swings and goes into the stands. It's caught by a fan as he'll stand up and he'll get some cheers for some other fans as a good catch. No glove is just able to make a bare-handed catch in outside of the field of play. And that is a good way to get a strike if your money is the delivery home. Off-speed almost gets him to swing. This one goes into the dirt off of Kola's right leap. And Nelson over to advance to third base. So a 3-1 count as the umpire will give Alex Money a new ball. And now things get a little more scary if you're this Chemic team, a little bit happier if you're Dow, the runner, moves up, inching even closer to the game's first run. Now an infield single, an error, a ball that gets behind Cola. A lot of opportunities as this one hit, and this one will fly right over our heads and will go behind us onto the practice field as now the count at full, 3-2. Two outs, that runner on third base in Riley Nelson, who had a single to start the inning, advanced to second on the sacrifice. Bunt advanced to third on the passed ball. McCoy flew out to right field in the first inning for that final out, trying to avoid two straight final outs. This one hit and it will drop right in front of the left fielder vocal. So the game's first run of the game happens on the RBI single from Logan McCoy. That's what he does so well. And Riley Nelson comes around to score. The Dow Chargers take a one to nothing lead in the bottom of the third inning. Another opportunity for Dow, Dan Kowalczak. Now batting for the Chargers. McCoy, who had that RBI single, standing on first base. Dow having a one to nothing lead in this game. Both teams have had multiple base runners on base. Dow, the first team to capitalize on those base runners as Kowalczak hits it to right field. Harvey running in and it's gonna make a routine fly out to right field. But the damage has already been done as Dow Chargers are able to score the first run of the game. We'll head to the fourth inning as this score Dow won. Chemics zero. You see Riley Nelson right there able to step on home plate for the game's first run as we'll see it one more time just how beautiful this play was. A beautiful RBI single from Logan McCoy. Riley Nelson no doubt about that one that that was going to drop and is able to run home as the Dow Chargers take a one to nothing lead heading into the fourth inning. Now we're gonna see a dangerous part of the lineup. Four, five, six for Midland leading things off will be Jarrett Wagner, whose main goal today is hitting. He is the designated hitter for this Midland team, hitting for Cole McMillan. McMillan only playing in the field Today, he'll be in center field as Jarrett Wagner will hit as Braylon Laverty on deck. He had a single back in the second inning. And Tim Vogel, who made a catch to get the first out of the inning, was unable to make the catch that scored the run. He will be in the hole. And you talk about those pass balls, you don't think anything of it, but that ball was hit right to Vogel. And you'd have to imagine, Vogel's able to get that ball in. If Nelson's standing on second base, that run doesn't necessarily come in. If things play out like they did, the next out was hit to right field. That ends the inning. Midland able to score, or Midland is able to go into the fourth inning, giving up no runs. But they will have an opportunity to climb back. Wagner stepping into the batter's box. He struck out 
back in that second inning, something he doesn't do very often. That was only Wagner's 10th strikeout on the year, a 370 hitter. Does a very good job as this team's designated hitter as the first pitch in for a strike. Wagner, one of five seniors for this Chemic team trying to come back, currently down one to nothing as Wagner awaits the pitch. This one outside for a strike. Trent Johnson now in his fourth inning of work through three innings has given up two hits, but has given up a runner on second base with less than two outs in every inning, is able to come back from that. The next pitch, this one hit to left field. Kowalczak running in and it's going to drop about five feet in front of Dan Kowalczak. So Jarrett Wagner is able to get on base with a third time this game, a leadoff single. In the first and second inning, both of those runners reached second base with a First inning was a seal, second inning was a sacrifice bunt. As you saw that single right there once again as Jarrett Wagner, the designated hitter, was able to get on base. As now Braylon Laverty coming up to bat. Cam Patty, the catcher, directing his infield around, expecting Laverty to lay down a bunt. Johnson now having to work from the stretch, something he's done really well at too, as Laverty swings away, hits it high into the infield. Will roll into foul territory as Van Summeren able to lunge back into fair territory and make the catch for the first out of the inning. That ball popped up and went high in the air. Van Summeren able to roll into foul territory for that out. And now Tim Vocal will come up to bat. Vocal had a bunt single, which moved Laverty over to second back in the second inning. Johnson working from the stretch, has worked from the stretch every inning as he'll have yet again another pick over attempt. Has been unsuccessful every time it's been both teams attempting to use that pickoff as Wagner has a very Big lead at first base. This pitch on the outside for a strike. Wagner taking his lead. The delivery, this one inside swings and a miss. Patty gets away from me, throws down to short and a beautiful throw to get the runner out. A beautiful bang bang play from Cam Patty and Logan McCoy. Patty the catcher, McCoy the shortstop and a caught stealing as that will be the second out of the inning. And now Johnson able to go back to his windup and is able to potentially get out of the inning. We'll look at this play just one more time, how good it was. This ball actually goes into the dirt. The runner running, that was a pinch runner, and McCoy able to clearly beat the runner, get the tag. As Brendan Singer, one of those seniors, he had pinch ran for Jarrett Wagner. The ball getting in the dirt. Wagner running to second base, able to get out. The beautiful throw from Patty, the beautiful tag from McCoy. An unconventional way to get the second out, but does so indeed as now Johnson going back to the, the wind-up position as Vocal takes yet another ball. The slow wind-up, this one low and in the dirt, Vocal. The left fielder so far, unable to make that catch the ball, hit right in front of him that scored Riley Nelson, trying to get on base for this Midland team. The pitch, this one, also a ball. The windup from Trent Johnson is peculiar to say the least. He has a slow windup where he keeps that left foot extended in the air for, takes almost like a pause before coming home. And it has tripped out the batters, no runs so far. 
You see that slow release and he's able to get it. A foul ball will go over to the fans to the left and will roll into the practice field behind us at Dow High School and it will remain the count. A full count opportunity. Vocal versus Johnson. The payoff pitch. This one slapped right back to center field. Riley Nelson, who scored the run, will make the catch to end the fourth inning. So a, after a leadoff single, he was caught stealing. We'll head to that. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dow has a one to nothing lead and they will look to extend it in this fourth as Alex Money is going to go on back for his fourth inning of work money. The only run given up back in that third inning to Riley Nelson is going to get the bottom half of the lineup, six, seven, eight, and potentially nine for this Dow team. So Alex Money trying to recuperate. It's just a one run game, not something to sweat over as Midland has had multiple base runners. So far, Midland has left three runners on base. They've gotten a hit or a walk in every single inning so far, just unable to do anything with it. That was the first inning where they weren't able to get a runner on second base. They almost did, but were unable to do so as Caleb Brensky is going to lead things off in this fourth inning. Like watching your favorite high school events on MCTV? Stay tuned for more upcoming events, including the Midland High School and Dow High School graduation ceremonies live on Facebook. Check out our Facebook page for other upcoming sports and community events on the MCTV network. As Brensky will step into the batter's box to start this bottom of the fourth inning, the first pitch from Money, this one on the outside called for a strike. Money working from the windup. This pitch low for a ball to count now one and one. We're currently at the one hour mark. From when we started this game, we're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Dow having a one to nothing lead on a beautiful Monday now evening. At Dow High School, multiple events going on. The soccer team practicing behind us. You have lacrosse now starting to warm up. There is a track meet with several schools behind the left field play as this pitch hit over Sokol's head. And Brensky will trot down and he will score, or not score, excuse me, he'll just get to first base on a single, a leadoff single as we are going to. We're going to see Billy Van Summeren up to bat now and Dow looking to use that bottom half of the lineup to maybe get on base for when that lineup card turns over. We talked about how dominant Riley Nelson is, and he is not in the hole, but the one right after in the hole as 7-8-9 come up. So if you can have a runner on base when Nelson comes up, a prime RBI opportunity for this Dow Charger team to extend that lead a little bit. Trent Johnson has gotten in a few sticky situations. Now every inning he's been able to work out of it as that first pitch goes in for a strike. Johnson able to use his strengths plus the strengths of this Charger fielding team to get out of some situations. But if you have a two to three to maybe even a four run lead, you can afford to give up a run or two as Van Summeren gets it in right center field. It's gonna land. They're gonna wave the runner. It actually gets past the Aco center in right field. They're waving the runner home and a RBI double for Billy Van Summeren. Scores Brensky all the way from first base and just that run support we were talking about as the Dow Chargers take a two to nothing lead. As a beautiful swing from Billy Van Summeren. It's only natural we show the replay. You talk about Brensky at first. Waited a little bit to see if it was gonna land and it landed indeed. Rolls past. Harvey at first base, coach waving the runner home. Brensky able to run, stomp on home plate and able to get the second run of the ball game as Dow takes a two to nothing lead as Money working now again to Trent Johnson. So Johnson, a perfect opportunity to hit himself in. More common, you see pitchers bat at the high school level, a perfect opportunity 
for Trent Johnson to bring a runner in as he takes this one in the infield. Laverty is actually going to get called off by Sokol for the first out of the inning. The wind, slight wind, not too much, but there is some wind here at Dow High School. There's also a beaming sunlight right above us. Could cause some issues for this infield outfield. Many of this team, both teams wearing sunglasses, trying to protect their vision. A lot of balls going high in the air, caused some trouble. Trent Johnson pops out to first base for the first out of the inning. And now batting the number nine hitter, Ryan Erdman. This one in for a strike. Erdman, one of several seniors in this starting lineup. Dow senior heavy, they only have one underclassman as Erdman goes into the dirt, actually makes contact. Money is going to get it, but it's gonna they're gonna say that it hit the dirt, then popped up high in the air, so Erdman is able to get a single as that actually might come out to benefit both teams. Obviously, the single now have multiple runners for Riley Nelson. If you're Midland, now creates a force out at first, second, and third base as you could see an opportunity. Nelson started the game grounding out to second base. You could see a double play opportunity for this Midland team. Nelson now batting is this one off speed, low and outside. Ryan Erdman is able to move into first base. Like we were talking about, the only underclassman on this Dow team is arguably their best hitter, Jack Backus, just a sophomore, but everyone else on this team, either on this varsity team, either a junior or a senior. As Nelson hits it to, guess who, second base. They flip it over to short, the four, six, three, double play, able to get out of the inning. Sometimes they call it a broadcaster's jinx, as we are going to look at that play multiple times. A beautiful play by Laverty is able to flip it over to Doyle, then over to Sokol, as we're gonna look at this replay. A hard hit to the second baseman, able to throw it to Doyle. The great transition at the beautiful stretch from Gabe Sokol, so they only give up a run, but are able to do a masterful job of getting out of the inning. Alex Money now, through four innings of work, has only given up two runs. The problem, the run support just not there yet, as we'll head to the fifth inning, as the 7-8-9 hitters will be up to bat for Midland, and Trent Johnson back onto the mound for his fifth inning of work. Through four innings, Johnson only has two strikeouts, both which came in the first inning to Kloha and Jarrett Wagner. He's gotten several flyouts. He's gotten multiple ground outs. He's only given up three hits. Each inning, there's been a runner on base. First three innings, that runner advanced to second with less than two outs. Last inning, the pinch runner that came in, Brendan Singer came in to pinch run for Jarrett Wagner, was caught stealing at second base. Patty will throw down the last warm-up pitch for Trent Johnson as now batting for Midland. It's gonna be Joshua Doyle, 0 for 1 so far. Grounded out to the third baseman. Gabe Sokol on deck, A.J. Harvey in the hole. The 7 8, 9 hitters, if one of them or two of them can get on base for that lineup card to flip over to Alex Money, Money would be in a very good opportunity to cut into this 2-0 deficit. The first pitch from Trent Johnson. This one outside for a ball. Cam Patty, an athletic catcher. Several scenarios where he is almost doing the splits. He was right there. No ball has gotten past him yet while there's been runners at base as here comes that next pitch. Patty trying to frame it, hunched over behind the plate. Back to back balls so far. Johnson working from the windup. This one, the frame job of Patty, that time is successful. Called a strike, 2-1 count.
this pitch hit over to right field, and this one will drop right in front of Alex Lieko. So Joshua Doyle does the job, is able to get on base a leadoff single. Four of the five innings so far for this Midland team, the leadoff hitter has been able to get on base. Trent Johnson then moves to the stretch and is able to get multiple outs. The first inning went one, two, three. Second inning, one, two, three. Third inning, the runner happened with one, two, three, fourth inning. So all five innings, the leadoff hitter has gotten on base for those innings a hit, one of those innings being a base on balls. As Sokol, the defensive first baseman takes a defensive swing, misses for a first pitch strike. Many of these Midland hitters stepping out and swinging, opening their body. And so when Trent Johnson throws an outside pitch, they're going away from that pitch and just kind of have to throw the bat out trying to make contact. We'll get another pickoff attempt. None so far through five or through four innings. Now in the fifth inning, Dow has a two-nothing lead, but the eight-nine hitters for Midland trying to move runners over with no outs. You could potentially see a bunt over. As here's the pitch, and Sokol lays down a bunt and goes right into Patty behind the plate. As this one will be classified as a strike. Johnson currently has given up no runs, but has given up four hits, has also given up a walk, only the two strikeouts, which have been a while ago. So these Midland Chemics able to make contact, just going right to hitters. We've seen some good plays from Logan McCoy at short to Jack Backus at third. Riley Nelson, good outfielder, a good fielder in the outfield, that center fielder, that captain of the outfield. Is able to come talk to the right and left fielders. Also has made a few catches. As there's been three flyouts to center field this game. The next pitch, this one, Sokol fouling it off. This one will roll back. And now with two strikes, the bun attempt out of play, out of question for Sokol. But a lot of opportunities. He's 0 for 1 so far, a ground out to short. Johnson and this Charger team would love another ball hit to the shortstop as McCoy has made multiple throws over to first base. We'll see yet again another pickoff attempt. We've talked about it a little bit. No pickoff attempts have worked successfully. They may have worked in keeping the runners at first base as a, a pretty significant lead for Joshua Doyle as they're going to keep him back. There's no time limit in baseball, so Johnson is going to throw over multiple times. Josh Doyle taking a lead. Also has the, the smarts to get back. The pitch, this one hit high in the air. And this one will hit in the stones behind us and roll back towards the practice field. And another strong opportunity for Sokol. We've seen a couple times this game, a lot of these batters battling off counts, battling off and are able to successfully then hit a single. We saw it with Jack Backus earlier and another pick off that one. If Summerin had held onto the ball, would have been close. The umpire, no need to call him safe as he dropped the ball. An 0-2 count for Sokol. Johnson now working from the stretch. He has been, honestly, much more dominant from the stretch than the windup as he delivers from the stretch. This one called a strike, and Sokol will go down looking. Didn't release that bat off of his shoulder, and a backwards K in the book for a first out strikeout in this fifth inning. And now A.J. Harvey will come up to bat. Harvey had a walk in the third inning and will look to either move a runner or just get a hit himself, get a walk. Anything getting on base is going to be good for the Chemex. They've had multiple runners on base, five to be exact, one in each inning. They, they've gotten that first runner each inning. They've gotten that first leadoff runner to get on base, just unable to do anything with it. In the first inning, the next guy struck out. Second inning was a sacrifice bunt. But then in the third inning, a fly out to center. Fourth inning, a pop up to first base. And the fifth inning was a strikeout looking as a big 
hack from AJ Harvey goes right through and into the glove of Patty. And working relatively successfully since moving to that stretch is Trent Johnson. Who Johnson kind of a hybrid between the stretch and the windup. As Doyle, a pickoff jet, this one goes past Van Summeren and Doyle able to run to second. They're being waved around to third and a miscommunication, a mishap. Maybe opens the door for the Midland Chemex as Doyle able to advance to third base. And we'll take a look at this play one more time. A pickoff attempt goes right through Van Summeren's glove. A heads up play by Doyle to hop up gingerly jogged over to second base, looked up at the third base coach, was being waved around and able to come standing up into third base and that changes things completely. AJ Harvey now has an opportunity to bring in a run. We've never had a runner get past second base so far for this Midland team. Now you have a runner on third base with one out, the number nine hitter. So this is a very, very big opportunity for both teams, Dow currently leads two to nothing. As this next pitch to RV off speed, and this one, a strikeout looking, the third and fourth strikeouts this inning. Four strikeouts, two of them looking as the lineup card does flip over. So if Alex Money, a perfect opportunity to cut into this lead himself. He's on the mound for the Chemex, now batting. One for two on the day had a bunt single to lead off the game all the way back at the top of the first inning, then flew out to center field in the third inning. A first pitch strike from Johnson. That's what you need to see if you're this down team. We haven't had many of these crucial situations that have will decide the outcome of, the, of this game. We had some in the early stages this seems and feels like one in the fifth inning, the middle part of this game, as Money hits one to left field, and it will be caught by the left fielder, Dan Kowalczak, and one of these game games goes to the Dow Chargers, as after that single, the runner advanced to third, Trent Johnson is able to do another one, two, three inning after giving up a hit, so through Five innings of work for Johnson. He's only given up four hits. Is able to get out of the inning once again. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning. As before we do so, as Money will now warm up. We're going to take a look at Money's hit, or lack thereof, that hits it to Kowalczak over at left field. And he's able to, not necessarily a diving play nonetheless, but a leaning in and is able to make a giant catch for out number three able to keep Dow leading and keep the scoreboard at zero. Money will now go back to work for his fifth inning of work and will have a very tough task, tough part of the lineup for this Dow team. Alex Liekos leading off, Jack Backus on deck, Logan McCoy in the hole, the two, three, four hitters. Liekos 0 for 1 so far, lined out to the first baseman. That was that play back in the bottom of the first where Gabe Sokol made a terrific play at first base. In the third inning, he had a sacrifice bunt, which ended up paying off as the runner was able to score on that play as Money, now in his fifth inning of work, we have not seen any pitchers for either team, but specifically for this Midland Chemex team, no pitchers have made their way down to the grass bullpen area out in the foul area of right field to warm up. A lot of the pitching staff for this Midland team also guys in the field. So we'll see how long this Midland team under the coaching staff of Seth Gronsky, Eric Albright, and David Jenkins. We'll see how long that they elect to go with Alex Money on the mound for this team as he delivers this one high. Throughout four innings of work, he's given up two, he's given up two runs, has two strikeouts, had them both in the second inning, given up several hits as well. This one hit to the shortstop, Doyle runs up, gets it a good throw over to first base, a good extension by Sokol, so a six to three, first out of the inning. A lot of contact for both teams. Only six combined strikeouts 
two for Dow, four for Midland. There was two strikeouts in the first, three strikeouts in the second combined by both teams, and then two strikeouts last inning. That is now batting Jack Backus. The first pitch, this one inside for a strike. Backus had a single through the right side of the infield in the first inning, flew out to left field as we're going to get a mound visit from one of the coaches. This coach being Eric Albright, Midland. Coaches wearing uniforms, Albright, number 24, David Jenkins, number 25, and Gronsky, number three. This a real quick mound visit as he will quickly head back to the dugout. You'd normally, multiple reasons why you would do this, just to calm your reliever down. In instances where you have a guy warming up, that could be just a time to pause the game to let your relief pitcher warming up. Multiple scenarios why you would have such a quick mound visit, just be calming him down. Jack Backus, a dangerous hitter for this down team, and you get him in a situation that you like if you're Midland. No one on and already one out, so you're okay, able to pitch to him as the next pitch, this one, inside. You don't necessarily see a lot of left-handed hitters at this level. Alex Money typically liking to work towards the left side batter's box, and it's typically outside when you get a lot of right-handed hitters, but Backus hitting from the left side. As Backus, this one is able to bend down and slap that, but it will go into foul territory for a, a big second strike. So now Backus almost will, will go down on strikes as Sokol had some trouble getting the ball back to Alex Money. Luckily for Midland, nobody was on base, so no damage, no extra damage was done. Money working from the windup. Here is the delivery. This one, slider, beautiful pitch. Gets Backus to swing and miss goes in the dirt as Cola will apply the tag, but a beautiful off-speed pitch by Alex Money is able to get Backus swinging and missing. That ball was in the dirt, nowhere near the strike zone. Start. It's where it starts, low in the strike zone. Guys think it's going to stay in the strike zone. They go to swing, and the ball is nowhere to be seen as the next batter with two outs is Logan McCoy. McCoy had an RBI single back in the third inning, which cracked the Dow scoreboard. One for two on the day. This pitch in for a strike. You get Backus batting with nobody on with one out. It's even better that you get Logan McCoy coming in today, a batting average over 400. No one on and two outs as this pitch hits the dirt. 2-0 count. The wind starting to pick up here at Dow High School. We haven't seen any plays that were directly affected by the wind. A couple of pop-ups going as this pitch hit to right center field. Harvey and McMillan running and it gets past Harvey who's sliding. And McCoy turns on the Jets and will have to stop at second base. So a great job by A.J. Harvey to hop back up and get the ball in. But Logan McCoy gets a two-out double as we will get an opportunity with the runner in scoring position down, an opportunity to extend their lead. Look at this Logan McCoy hit. As he is running to first base and that ball drops and he turns on the Jets quickly, running over to second base. A beautiful job. You can't see it, but Harvey fell down, hopped immediately back up and was able to get the ball in to keep him at second base as this one in for a strike. And we saw it happen in the third inning. There was a runner on second with no with two outs. And there was just a, a meaningless pass ball. Nelson advanced to third. You don't think anything of it, especially with two outs. But Logan McCoy was able to drive in a run because of that. And what it now does is it puts you in a scenario where it forces a deep single from Kjolzak to score that runner in from second instead of third. And that slider has been working for Alex Money all afternoon. He got Jack Backus to swing and miss. Now got Kjolzak on an opportunity where it could have been a 2-0 count. Now the count is, or could have been a 1-1 count, excuse me. Now the count is 0-2 because of the ability 
of Alex Money working again. He does the slider again, and it hits off of the glove into the outfield. They're waving around McCoy, and McCoy will jog up, and he will stomp on that home plate as a single by Dan Kowalczak is going to score the run, making the lead three to nothing. It was hit towards third base. Colin Terrell put the outstretched glove just, it actually hit off of his glove, so it would be interesting to see if they credit it as a hit or an error. It was a very difficult play. I'd have to imagine they would give that a hit. That's what I would call it is, that was a tough play. Kowalczak nonetheless gets the RBI and a run scores. This pitch hit to center field and the bats keep coming. It goes down in the, will roll to the wall. McMillan will pick up the ball. They're waving around the runner. Here comes the throw. There will be no play at home as the runs keep on coming as Kowalczak is able to score all the way around from first base at Caleb Berensky, a two out RBI double for this Dow Charger team as the coach will come and will this be as we're going to take a look at this replay a great base running from Kowalczak the ball landed and he was running for home from the start that ball rolled all the way to the wall and the throw in by Cole McMillan was unsuccessful and now back to back hits back to back runs and they are going to leave Alex Money in the game they're Midland's best pitcher but the Dow Chargers have had some success. First two innings, no success. They didn't score a single run, but the third inning, they were able to score a run. Fourth inning, add a second run, and now have two more runs into this fifth inning to make the score four to nothing. There still are two outs for Billy Van Summeren, who was one for one on the day. The first pitch, this one off speed, and Summeren has to duck out of the way. As Summeren, Stepping into the batter's box, wearing the number 30, the number seven hitter for this Charger team. This one now goes a little bit more speed. This one high and inside. Dow looking to extend the lead once again. Alex Money, four and two thirds inning of work, has given up four runs so far. As the next pitch, this one fouled off into the right field side will actually leave the playing area and after giving up two balls to start a big opportunity a big first strike he can now calm down relax get that second pitch strike his he's got a good strikeout slider it's gotten a lot of pitcher a lot of hitters as this one in the dirt for a ball 3-1 count with two outs Dow leading four to nothing Money has a very good off-speed pitch. The problem is that fastball just not there at that success level of the off-speed pitch. Most of these hits coming when he goes with that fastball. And he's going to attempt to pick off, and that one throws into the outfield. And great base running by Brensky as he'll hop up quickly and slide into third base. And it happened in the third inning. A meaningless advancement from second to third with two outs came up to be deadly because that infield single by Logan McCoy scoring Riley Nelson was the first run of the ball game. Dow has since added three more and now Billy Van Summer in a big opportunity. The next pitch, this one hit to left center field. McMillan running over and it's gonna get down, a run scores. Van Summeren will move into second base and the runs continue as the Dow Chargers take a now five to nothing lead as Brensky will come in to score from third base. Van Summeren's day getting even better. Now two for two, has a double, has a single, and has a walk. That one an RBI for Billy Van Summeren. Now the pitcher, Trent Johnson, has that insurance runs that he needs could add some even more is one for two on the day and this is where if you're Alex Money you're facing the number eight hitter perfect opportunity to get out of this inning as the first pitch this one hit high in the air will go right over our heads and will be a first pitch foul ball a first pitch strike nonetheless
there's that off-speed pitch that Money throws so well in for a strike. And now Johnson, one pitch away from an out. Hey, let's go, Pitcher versus pitcher. Don't you pitch this one slap into left field, and it's going to land. The throw in, they're gonna, they actually decide to hold him back. They were waving Billy Van Summeren around to score, but wisely bringing him back in a little bit of a two out rally for this team. And the coach will come back out to the mound as we will get a many things changing for this team. We're gonna get a pinch runner, potentially a pitching change. We'll talk about the pinch runner right now as this pinch runner for the Dow Chargers wearing number seven. It's gonna be Ryan Murphy. He came in early, was the pinch runner, and that's also going to be a pitching change as Alex Money leaves. Will walk with the coach over to the field. This Colin Terrell is going to be the new pitcher. We see it on high school. He is now, he was playing third base. Now he'll get his warm-ups in as Alec Money heads to the bench. We'll see who the new second baseman is. The new second baseman is Al Money, or Al Money, excuse me. He's just gonna actually go from pitcher, go get his fielding glove, and go over to second base. Laver, Laverty will go from second to third. So just to recap real quickly, just three people switching positions. Alex Money will go from pitcher to second. Braylon Laverty will go from second to third. Colin Terrell will go from third to pitcher. Guys, let's tell you about Colin Terrell as a pitcher through 29 and a third inning of work. He started in four games, played in nine games, has a th three and one record, given up 28 hits, seven earned, 18 strikeouts, at ERA at one. 0.67, so Terrell, a viable reliever off of the bench, and his first batter he's going to face is the number nine hitter, Ryan Erdman. Erdman had that peculiar single last inning in the fourth, and he swung it, hit the dirt, flew high in the air, Money was able to catch it, but it wasn't a catch, it was just a high single, and he had beaten out the throw. As Terrell, Will pitch first, falls down, but Erdman able to foul it into territory. Sokol will make the catch as Terrell on his knees is able to get out of that inning. So a one pitch fly out from Erdman, but the damage has already been done. That fifth inning, Dow was able to score three runs and will head to the top of the sixth. Dow leading five to nothing. Trent Johnson on for his sixth inning of work and has done a masterful job doing so. Except when he works out of the windup. All five innings, the first leadoff hitter was able to reach base, four of them via a single, one of them happening in the third inning. That's A.J. Harvey reached on base on a walk. And now a tough lineup, a tough opportunity for this Midland team. The two, three, four hitters leading things off. That'll be Lane Kloha, Colin Terrell, and Jarrett Wagner. The three do up as Johnson getting some final warm-up pitches. It was a while since he was in the dugout for a long time, actually had to come in and hit and hit a single, was stranded on first base. As Kloha walking towards the batter's box, wearing the, the high socks with the Blue socks with the yellow stirrups. Wearing number 12 in Midlands with gray uniforms. Black numbering outlined in yellow. Loha, the blue batting helmet. Takes a few practice swings before stepping into the batter's box to start this sixth inning. As the first pitch, this one. Outside called for a strike, Patty. Excellent job framing all day, an athletic catcher doesn't hit for this Charger team. As the next pitch, this one low and in the dirt. Patty, the defensive player, sense Trent Johnson, such a good hitter for this team. 
They're able to put the designated hitter in for a fielder, and they do so at that catcher position. Campati can just focus on catching nonetheless. As this pitch, this one in for a ball. Cam Patty only has 46 at bats, has 15 hits, six walks, has that average at 326. So a, a good hitter nonetheless as this pitch slapped right back to center field. Nelson running back, running back, and that will get over his head as Cola continues the trend and now is standing on second base for a leadoff double. So that's six innings. Six batters, six times. The Midland Chemics have led the inning off with a single, but also six times. Johnson has followed that up with an out. Three of those innings, he followed the first single, or the first at batter with a strikeout. Colin Terrell, who's now on the mound, will attempt to bring in a first run. Down five runs. You can't get it all back right now. The tie run still several batters away just keeping the outs as low as you can you know you would assume there's going to be no sacrifices Terrell is your number three hitter as Kloha shot that one right over Nelson's head in center field and this is where we're going to see the strength of Patty right there as even though it was a ball he was able to keep the runner at second base he threw out a runner threw out one runner so far with the help of shortstop Logan McCoy as he was able to keep that runner at second base. Actually, was the only time the runner didn't reach second base in this inning. Johnson now having to work from the stretch. This one hit to McCoy short, and McCoy will make a long throw across the diamond, and Terrell is able to beat it out. A beautiful snag from Logan McCoy, just he was so far away. It was in between third and shortstop, as even though he made a good throw, as we'll take a look at this hit from Terrell one more time. A beautiful swing from Terrell, and the speed able to beat out that throw. Billy Van Summeren unable to corral that one, as you see the runner on second. That's Kloha, who led the inning off with a double. And now the number four hitter, Jarrett Wagner. He had a single. This is a perfect opportunity for the Midland Chemics to mark their comeback. Currently down five runs. The tying run in the hole for this Chemic team. He gave up three runs in the last half inning. An opportunity to cut into this deficit. Johnson now working from the stretch. This one hits and goes right over our cameraman right here up top of the truck. He actually had to duck so it wouldn't hit him and this one flies behind us for a strike. Wagner, strong contact hitter, struck out in the first inning, had a single in the fourth inning. Johnson now delivering home. This one on the outside, Patty leaving it there just a little bit longer, trying to get that second strike. And he's gonna go talk out to Johnson. The first real sign of any struggle that we've seen the first time Midland has had multiple base runners on an inning. First time he's given up two hits, that being the sixth hit. But so far, through five innings, Trent Johnson hasn't given up a run. And that's all that matters. You can give up as many hits and walks and bad pitches as you can, but keeping that run column at zero is the most important part, and that's what he's done. A 1-1 one, one count for Wagner. The delivery, this one hit high in the air. We'll go in foul territory, and Patty is actually gonna get called off by the pitcher, Johnson, and it will be dropped. So some miscommunication got actually hit at the apex of the third baseman. Backus, the pitcher Johnson, and the catcher Patty. No communication, no one called that ball off. Patty looked like Patty was gonna have it for a, a routine out number one, but Johnson called that ball. That ball's hit high in the air. You're looking right at the ball, not necessarily looking at where the other fielders are, especially with some wind we've been having today. Kind of moves that ball around and is able to work out luckily. Just a long strike and not a first out of the inning. That would have been a huge turning point for this 
Midland and down teams respectively. The two strike pitch, this one slapped into left field and the third hit of the inning and now the worst scenario if you're a pitcher in baseball. Bases loaded, nobody out. And now the tying run moves to the on deck circle. They haven't scored yet, but getting closer and closer. Bases loaded, no one out. Cam Patty, the leader behind the plate, is going to go talk to his pitcher. Trent Johnson has worked well so far. Just unable. We, we've seen we, this Dow team different in the Midland team is a lot of their relief pitchers are guys that aren't playing. Nolan Sanders, John Sajanko, their second and third pitchers. Um, haven't seen any of them warming up. We also. Logan McCoy and Jack Backus have some innings work so far as the next batter is going to be low for a ball. That's Braylon Laverty, one for two on the day. A big opportunity to bring in a run. Any contact into the outfield is going to score at least one. A sacrifice fly in play as well as here is the delivery. This one hit right back up the middle. McCoy will field it, step on second, throw it over to first. So the best case scenario, if you're Dow, a 6-4-3 double play. However, a run does come in to score. That being Lane Gloha, he'll come around for the first run of the game. Colin Terrell will move over to third base. But the 6-4-3 to to double play, now a runner on third with two outs. So if you are the Dow Chargers and Trent Johnson, you have to be happy with how that scenario turned out. Turning a 6-4-3 to double play with nobody out. The way that ball was hit is Logan McCoy was roaming towards the second base side, just picked it up, stepped on the bag, and threw it over to first base. No need for Ryan Erdman at second base and a bang, bang play. So just a six to three double play. Didn't use the second baseman. As the next pitch, this one off speed. In for a strike for Tim Bokel. Bokel, 0 for 1 so far. Had a sacrifice bunt in the second inning. Flew out to center field in the fourth inning. And Johnson electing to work from the windup. This one low for a ball. Johnson, that's been the storyline today. Trent Johnson giving up hits. He has given up a lot of hits, eight hits to be exact, but he's only given up one run, and that's all that matters. He's gotten in some sticky situations, able to get out of it as another fouled ball from Vocal. Gets out of the glove of Cam Paddy. Vocal, one of the juniors of this Midland team. Both teams very experienced. The Chemex, they only have one sophomore on their varsity roster, that being Kloha, the catcher. As this next pitch, this one inside, no, called strike three. And after giving up three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back base hits, Johnson is able to give up a double play and then get vocal to strike out looking. So a great job to avoid the challenge. 5-1 is your score as we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. Nelson will lead things off for the Dow Chargers. One, two, three batters for Dow. That'll be Nelson, Liekos, and Jack Backus. As the coverage of this Crosstown rivalry matchup is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to create games like this one, sign up for our media creator workshops. You will learn how to be a producer, create a studio program, use professional video cameras, and edit your video on professional software. Learn how your creation can be made into a podcast, YouTube video, and be seen on Roku or Apple TV. Call 837-3474 to learn more. More information about workshops can be found on www.cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash mctv. Want a sneak peek at what community media is all about? MCTV is now offering virtual orientations to show you all that you can do at the MCTV network. Virtual orientations will be held in June. Check out MCTV's Facebook or call us to register. Colin Terrell working now is one third inning of work as Riley Nelson will 
Riley Nelson will lead things off as a busy day here at Dow High School. A track and field matchup over to our left. Currently working throughout that track and field matchup. Also some lacrosse practice going on behind us as the first pitch, this one to Nelson outside for a strike. The JV teams met over on the other side of the field. Looks like they have wrapped up play. And we are in the sixth inning of work, bottom of the sixth inning. Dow has that five to one lead. This one, Nelson slaps Will right to where some fans are sitting. Will actually roll up the hill and will be rolled right into a fan. Good crowd today on this Monday evening. Now in the middle of May, both teams working their way towards the back half of their baseball seasons. The next pitch, this one high for a ball. Riley Nelson, one for three on the day. Grounded out to second base to start the game. Had a single, came around to score in the third, then grounded into a inning ending double play in the fourth inning. Terrell working from the windup. This one, an off speed pitch that didn't break. This one inside forced Nelson to duck. And that one, a ball nonetheless. Nelson stepping back into the batter's box. Nelson has 18 hits on the season, trying to improve that number, that average in the 300s for Riley Nelson. Has worked this count back to full. Getting the leadoff hitter out, very important if you're this Midland team. This one slapped up. McMillan gonna go for it and he's gonna roll right into the glove. He actually mishaps and it will roll back in behind him, causing Riley Nelson to move over to second base. So a single plus the error by McMillan will advance Nelson over to second base. And now Ken Dow increase this lead with Alex Liekos now batting. Liekos, 0 for 2 so far, lined out to the first baseman and grounded out to the shortstop. Also sandwiched in between those outs at a sacrifice bunt. And he lays down to bunt a beautiful bunt as Quola will throw it over to first. And they're actually going to say that it hit the runner at first before. The question is, they're saying, the umpire's saying it hit the runner. Now the question's saying, did it hit him while he was in fair territory or in foul territory? Because that's the difference between an out and just a foul ball. As, by the way, Liekos is picking up his bat. As you look at this replay right here, he lays down the bunt and actually hits him as he was running towards first base. As that was a, a good replay, we're able to see exactly what happened as the Midland coach coming out to ask what the explanation was. And we'll retreat back to the dugout as Liekos now back up to bat. So the sacrifice bunt attempt unsuccessful. With only one strike, we imagine we'll see it once again. Swinging away. Or also just not laying down to bunt as he didn't swing. This one, the slider from Terrell in for a strike. Money. The starting pitcher for Midland had a very good strikeout slider. This is the first opportunity we will see Terrell had that strikeout pitch with 0-2 count. This one, he goes heat. This one, high and outside. Nelson, standing on second base, scored the first run of the game, was unable to come around to score at this point. One for, or Nelson, two for four. The Echoes, 0 for two but a opportunity for an RBI. This one hit to the second baseman, and Soka will run over and get it and throw it over to second base and almost got him back. Nelson, a little bit of a mishap base running, almost a mishap as the ball was hit and assumed it was going to land. It didn't. Alex Money at second base came in to grab it, but Sokol running over makes the catch. A hard throw back to the second base where Josh Doyle was standing and now 
all that happens is that was just a very long out number one with Jack Backus standing up. One for three. First pitch, this one slapped to Sokol. He'll field it cleanly and just run over and touch the base. The runner advanced to third, but three unassisted for Jack Backus says now the most dangerous hitter on this Charger team, Logan McCoy. Two for three so far as an RBI, which he had in the third. He flew out to right field, still made very good contact. He also had that double, the two out double, and they are going to walk him as he will trot down to first base. This allows a force out at second base. And we'll see if they pitch to Dan Kowalziak, had an RBI single. And all that does is just, it, it brings a force out. So if it's into the second baseman or the shortstop, they're able to just go to second. It also takes away the hitting threat as McCoy is just going to steal and they're on him in a, a pickoff attempt. They throw to third, a little bit of a pickle and they get the run tagged out at home. So the idea was there. McCoy trying to get in a pickle to allow Riley Nelson time to run home, but a great job by Terrell just stepped off the bag, was able to throw to third, who threw to home. So a a one to five to three, one to five to two out for the third out of the inning. Kwolzak will be batting the next time around as we will head to the top of the seventh. The Chemics down four runs. And we'll see if they can mark a comeback. Trent Johnson now in his seventh inning of work. The seven eight, nine hitters due up for this Midland Chemic team. Josh Doyle, Gabe Sokol, and A.J. Harvey. The hitters do up. Take you back to this last out. Logan McCoy attempting to steal second, the fake, then throw to third, then throw to home. It's a scenario where you have runners on the corners with two outs because if the run if the runner scores before the, the third out is made, if it's not a force out the run, will still count. Dow trying to basically get Logan McCoy in a pickle to give time for Nelson at third base to score, to tap on home plate to score. But then what happened is Terrell stepped off the bag, took a few steps, did that pump fake like he was going to throw to second, which got Nelson to commit to running home, was able to throw it to third at Laverty, who then threw it to Cola at home. So a good idea from this down team trying to sneak in an extra run but an even, an even better defensive play by the Chemics and will they carry this momentum as the next pitch right over our heads and almost hit some Midland fans behind us but luckily it went behind us as Josh Doyle had a first pitch strike a long first pitch strike as here comes the next pitch from Trent Johnson, this one off speed, in for a strike. Underrated player of the day has to go to Cam Patty, even though he has hit the ball, the framing that he has been able to do, the ability to keep the ball in frame. If it's a ball, he's able to make it look like a strike, make strikes look even better for that umpire to call a strike as the next pitch, this one hit to right field. Liekos running in, has to sprint and is able to make the catch for the first out of the inning. So. After some nice contact by Doyle, he gets the first out of the inning. Gabe Soko, Soko coming up to bat 0 for 2 on the day. And we're actually going to get a new hitter. Jackson Poole is going to be pinch hitting for Gabe Soko. It's the first pitch to Poole. This one in the dirt. Jackson Poole, 21 games played and 45 at bats. He has 11 hits, a 244 average as he will be hitting for Sokol, who Sokol has had a better season, just not a better game. Over two so far, grounded out to short, then was looking on strikes. So just switching things up a bit as Jackson Poole will come up to bat. The delivery from Johnson, this one slapped right back up the middle, so the elect to pitch hit pays off. As even though this is the first time the leadoff hitter 
hadn't reached base. The second hitter does. Jackson Poole reaches first base for a one out single. And A.J. Harvey will come up to bat. And this is a very big opportunity to flip the lineup over the nine hitter. Harvey, Alex Money standing on deck as the head coach for the Dow Chargers coming out, moving some things around with that runner on first place, an inning ending double play still in the question as Harvey takes the first pitch and hits it deep in and luckily, currently in the, the girls mile right now, no one was at that point. If this was, if they were doing the 100 meter dash or the 110 meter hurdles, there would have been a track, someone who would gotten hit. So convenient opportunity that the event was a distance event as the pitch Coming inside, Camp Hattie able to save that ball at behind A.J. Harvey, the senior, wearing number 17, one of the left-handed hitters for this Kemet team at bat. The number nine hitter is 0 for 1 so far, and went down looking on strikes his last at bat in the fifth inning, reached base via a walk in the third. The next pitch, Harvey lays down a beautiful bunt. Johnson has some misplays and is unable to throw it. Erdman getting over to first base, not in time. And that one, more than likely an error. One of those, you, how do you determine an error? It's, it's very difficult. It was a close play. And you have to wonder if he would be able to make that play. If he had cleanly fielded that ball, we'll take a look how close it was. A beautiful bunt. And he running and he just hit the palm part of the mitt and Ryan Erdman over there at first base just, it was too close. Harvey gets to first base, reaching base via an error. So that on base percentage gonna go up. In three at bats, he's reached base two times. As the lineup switches over, Alex Money right now in line for the loss when this game ends as he was pulled after giving up that fifth run as the senior. A big opportunity, they're down 5-1 in the top of the seventh inning. Johnson having to work from the stretch. This first pitch, this one, this one's gonna get in the left center gap and they're gonna wave the runner around. Riley Nelson fields the ball. And this one will leave runners on the corners. Alex Mooney not wanting to get the loss. An RBI single as Jackson Poole will come around to score. A.J. Harvey will move over to third base as now Lane Klola will come up to bat. But before he does so, we're gonna see that replay one more time. There's Poole rounding third, heading for home. No throw by Nelson. He's just gonna cause that play to be a single, putting runners on the corners with only one out. Five to two, the tying run. Lane Kloha up to bat. Answering the question you're all asking, Lane Kloa has one home run on the season if he is able to make it number two. That would tie things up at five apiece. They've had th three consecutive hits or three consecutive guys reaching on base. The first pitch, this one right in between Patty's legs as he is able to keep that ball. Lane Kloha, one for three on the day. Struck out in the first, flew out to second in the third, had a double, came around to score in the sixth. He's one of two runs to score. The pitch to Kloha, this one again in the dirt, again stopped by Patty. So get a new ball from the umpire. A 2-0 count. You're deep into this game. It's not like you want to pull Trent Johnson, but you also don't want to give up this game. We haven't seen any action from the Charger bullpen. Their two relief pitchers, or maybe two starting pitchers, haven't seen any action. You could see McCoy, you could see Backus. None have come so far. The next pitch, this one outside for a strike. So after multiple balls, he's able to come back, hit that outside strike zone. Something that Johnson has done all day went through five innings without giving up a single run in the sixth inning, gave up a run, has given up one in the seventh. The pitch, this one hit high in the air to Nelson. It's actually gonna be Erdman is gonna be making the catch. And it's not far enough to attempt a tag, so a long fly out to 
second base for the second out of the inning, and now comes the pitcher, Colin Terrell. Terrell, no home runs on the season as we see this play. Once again, a beautiful pitch from Johnson is able, Erdman able to roam back to make the catch. They might have thought about it, but electing not to tag the runner at third, that being A.J. Harvey. Money over at first base as Colin Terrell is at bat. Terrell, one for three on the day, flew onto center field, lined down to third and then had a single, which actually had an RBI. This pitch in for a strike. Cam Patty working this framing ability, his best part of his game. Also another good part, keeping those runners at base. If you had the tying run on deck, you don't want to give up an extra run by a passed ball or a wild pitch or an error from Patty behind the plate. The pitch home. This one outside, and even that one clearly outside. Patty doing a nice job of being able to bring that, bring that mitt slowly, trying to have it clip the strike zone, maybe get an extra strike in there as the count is one and one with two outs. Runners on the corners. They've had two really good opportunities to get a run in, get some run support. They have two, they need three more. This one, a big swing and a big, a big one-handed swing from Terrell. And now two strikes with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. Runners are on those corners. That's Alex Money on first, AJ Harvey on third. Harvey reached on an error. Money drove in a run as a single. Then Cloha flew out to second base. And now Colin Terrell, who was the pitcher, came into relief trying to spark a comeback. Here's this pitch. This one, a check swing, and it actually rolls all the way to Erdman. Erdman will throw over, and that will be a ground out to second base. The Chargers coming out of the dugout giving lots of cheers. They're hugging Trent Johnson as this team coming over as the Dow Chargers take that lead five to two. The slow walk from Alex Money, who's gonna get the loss, as that will do it here from Dow High School. The Dow Chargers take this game five to two, as we'll show you how it happened, and it was Runs and runs in the third inning, Riley Nelson was able to come around to score. In the fourth inning, it was Brensky, and in the fifth inning, McCoy, Kolziak, and Brensky again. That's how they got their five runs. It was five to nothing. In the sixth inning, Kloha was able to crack the scoreboard for Midland to get their first run, and Jackson Poole, the pinch hitter, got one. They got the tying run to home plate, but was unable to do so as the Midland Chemics fall to the Dow Chargers two to five. You see. There, the Dow Chargers excited after that win. They get Trent Johnson to get the complete game win as Alex Money, the loss for the Chemex. It was a very good crowd today, thanking all the fans for coming out. Fans socially distant from all the way to the right field wall, all the way down right in front of us. You see there in the stands, as well as a good opportunity for this, both teams. They got to play some baseball today. It was a beautiful Monday as the Dow Chargers just a little bit better in run support victorious. Trent Johnson doing a great job pitching today. He got in some sticky situations, but was able to get back that as the Dow Chargers are gonna win five to two against the Midland Chemics as we like to thank you all for tuning in. It was a great crowd. There was a big day today. Your final score, one final time, Dow 5, Midland 2.